Appamada's programmes and facilities are supported through your generosity. Your support really does make a huge difference. You'll find a link for contributions on the website at appamada.org forward slash contribute. Thank you so much. Vast is the robe of liberation, a formless field of benefaction. Wearing the universal teaching, I realize the one true nature, thus harmonizing all being. Vast is the robe of liberation, a formless field of benefaction. Wearing the universal teaching, I realize the one true nature, thus harmonizing all being. Vast is the robe of liberation, a formless field of benefaction. Wearing the universal teaching, I realize the one true nature, thus harmonizing all being. So I think what we can do is, um, because there's a, I don't have much for today, there's not much pressure, I'll go ahead and do what we often were doing um, with the previous cohort, is actually just start with check-ins where anyone can talk about where they are, what they're sewing, ask questions. The amount of new material, so to speak, for the new folks is limited today. I'm going to be talking about um, how to cut the material and prepare it for the, the sewing. Um, and so that shouldn't take long at all. So you can kind of, again, start to familiarize yourself with how we ask questions, how feedback is given, uh, or how guidance for next steps is given. So does anyone want to, to start? And that includes, um, we can check in as well with the folks who've been um, on for a while. In fact, why don't I just go ahead and call on folks? I think down Zoom, that is the most natural. Uh, I'll go from, I think, probably the order in which we joined the meeting. So Maria, are you? Um, yeah, um, I'm still um, working around my middle line mm -hmm. of the, these like the middle line of, um, of this. So I've done um, two of the lines. So I'm just going to be doing the two, the two sides Great. down. So I think that'll probably take me today, won't it? I think. Probably so, yeah. yeah. yeah so and you're feeling confident? With that. Yeah, yeah, and I kind of got into I forgot the rhythm of it, you know, like dr drawing the like once I drew the line again, the chalk line out and then did my stitches the width of that. Mm -hmm. I got into a rhythm and a consistency with that. It's really helpful, isn't it, to really kind of draw your chalk line back in <laughs> when, it, uh, when it's come off. So that's been that's been really helpful. And I've yeah, I've got into a rhythm with that. So yeah, feeling confident with that, she says, famous last words. <laughs> Oh, we're here if you're, if you're not. I might take my time though, because then it's moving on to some. Oh no, it's the outer line, isn't it? After that, so I'm all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Still, still, just Nama Kibutsu for now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Hillary. How about you? Okay. Um, all I've done is my practice stitches, which you passed, which I was. I can't tell you, it was like being at school. <laughs> it was really, it's really interesting, my response to, to um, getting a, you know, a positive response to my stitches. So yeah, I was noticing all of that stuff. Um, I haven't got a clue what to do next, or even what information, like how to steps to download or anything. So I'm, I'm kind of just waiting with um, eagerness find out what I do next. Thank so. you. I hope that um, this introductory kind of going through and watching the previous cohort, I hope that that's at least entertaining for, for now, but we'll, um, we'll definitely get you some, some new information. I'm absolutely fine listening to everybody who's further on, so that's not a problem. Okay. okay. Thank you. 
Julia, how about you? When I did the um, sample stitches, I did find that they were quite a lot larger than the little sample that Lynn had done for us to start with. So I need to look at that again. Um, and also I'd already ordered the silk because I'd looked at one of the previous um, videos and I'd selected the silk. And, and when I told you the number, you did wonder whether it was a bit too close um, for seeing the stitches. So I'm gonna try doing the stitches today and just see how well they show up or whether I do need to get a different silk. Yeah. But like Hillary, the uh, emotional response of, oh my goodness, it's like being at school, I'm gonna get marked, <laughs> was uh, a kind of, oh, you know, kind of, will I pass, was something that, it's been a long while since I felt like that, and it was like, don't be so silly. <laughs> Why get worked up about it? But but it's there, isn't it? That's just part of us, yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I mean, you had at least 12 years of, of that conditioning, so it would be strong, wouldn't it? Mm. Thank you. And I guess I, I'll say this now before we go on to the next. Um, regarding, I have asked all of the new cohort to send me photos of their stitches. And I did that with the previous cohort, but there is no real pass fail. And I'm not keeping track of who has and has not sent me um, sent photos of that. If you chose never to send me a photo and to just trudge forth, um, I am not going to stop someone from doing that. I, my stance is, and I said this in the email that I sent out recently, um, that uh, it is just so much easier to you know, uh, nip it in the bud, so to speak, that if there is a structural issue in your stitch or you're not using a back stitch, it looks right on the front, but you're not using a back stitch, it's so much easier to catch that now than to have to redo half of your rakasu. So that's, uh, that's really what this is about. It's not really a pass fail thing. I've seen folks who have um, dyslexia or um, a really, really severe dyslexia um, and they, their stitches were not terribly consistent, um, different lengths, different angles, different spacings, and they still finished. And it still looks like a fine rakasu. It, you, it is their hand that sewed, stitched it and you get to see that reflected there in their rakasu. It looks different from other people, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, I am working on the chalk outline for the middle row of stitches um, and I understand how to do the chalk outline and I don't understand the note about uh, basting the corners mm -hmm. um, and I also don't understand the um, Sorry, I tried to find a video before I joined and then ran out of time. Um, the knotless start of going back over the stitch. Um, but then I think when I understand those two things, then I'll be able to do the two rows of um, stitches. So when you're talking about the knotless start where you're going over, are you talking about the reinforced one? Well, what, whatever's appropriate to do the the surround, the two mm. rows of surround. I think that the one, the, the non-reinforced version is probably okay. But let me demonstrate what I meant by, or what's meant by the, the corner basting quickly. So the corner basting is, I suppose I could demonstrate it. Let me just verbally describe it and see if that's um, with your experience. So the corner basting will simply be basting along this stitch here. I generally will do it, let me get something fine enough to point with. I generally will do it here on this side of this stitch to catch the most fabric possible. And you're just, it's just a little, just like these bases that you see here, except along here, um, going all the way through both front and back. And that's just to make sure that the interfacing and silk 
that's in between all of these layers stays put as you're working your way along here and not you know you're not introducing a, a stretch that you can't see you know that you're accidentally easing back there or something somehow that you'll by having two corners basted that they're they should stay taut it should stay well shaped inside if that is if that makes sense okay and then i take the thread out afterwards so it's just holding that's, it in place that's right yeah okay um great thank you and then you had a question about the reinforce or the the stitch do you remember the um knotless start the the non-reinforced one i only started teaching it uh about halfway through so it may not be super fresh is that do you know what i'm referring to when i say unreinforced mm -hmm. No. Okay. So for this one, I definitely recommend for the length of, if you're trying to do it all in one piece of, of thread, try to, or measure out three times the length of the row of stitches that you're about to do or the line of stitches, because you're going to need a little extra at the start, which I'm about to, to show you what I mean by that. So what you'll do so ordinarily, if I had a knot at the end of this thread, I would come up from below to start the stitch and then go down for right-handed people, go up on the left and go down on the right. So that's how it would normally happen. But here, what you're going to do is you're just going to start on the face or on the, the front um, where the namukyabutsu looks like namukyabutsu. And you're going to start your stitch that way um, by going in the front first. So you'll pull through until you've got, I'd say about twice the length of your needle is a comfortable amount. And you will leave that protruding the entire time that you're doing this, this row of stitches. And it is only once you are done that you will come back and secure that. And I'll show how to do that very quickly. It is the, I've also called this the tunnel method is one of the ways I've described it. So y'all can't see me. So let me get another stitch in just to keep me from pulling this out by mistake. Okay, one more so I can demonstrate, so I can be true to what I'm about to say. I think these are a little spaced out, but that's okay. All right, so I've got Assume there's a whole line of stitches there and you're coming back after having just finished the far end. It is the same basic principle of how you'll finish the far end by kind of burying the stitch in between the row of stitches or let me demonstrate instead of trying to describe. Um, so it's how I've how I ended a thread on the the rows that I've just been doing connecting the frame to the face. That's exactly right. Yeah. Okay, great. It's simply at the um, at the start now that you've given yourself that tail to do that same practice with. Great. And just carefully try to thread it. Amazing. So you're doing it both ends. Mm -hmm. okay. And that, yeah, same same principle, same finished look, the same great. little bit of taut. I think those are the two things that you asked about. Is that right? It is. Thank you. Um, and so I'll just do a, a cheeky bonus question. Is um, sure. So, would you recommend doing the same, also the same, then on the thread length of do do a side, and then finish, and then get cut another piece of thread and do a side? That's the way I do it. Okay. I think the risk there is the that the thread can get twisty and fiddly. If that happens, I will take my needle off and uh, you can't see it because I'm dangling with gravity, but I will dangle the thread and let it untwist itself. Um, so that's, uh, if you if it starts to try to coil a lot, that's that back stitch introducing a, a, a twist in the thread and, you, and it will release itself with gravity. Lovely, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Marla, how are you? I'm great. Thank you. And John, I just haven't directly told you how grateful I am 
knowing that you just moved almost 2000 miles away from Austin and you have recreated a, a place for us to be able to learn. And that I know that it's complicated for you to be able to show so close up and also I just am very grateful for the trouble that you've gone to for us and not to divert from the fact that I'm still in my frame and I'm meandering along my normal route of of reading watching videos thinking visualizing and then starting all over again to avoid having to actually do it so um, but I'm very happy I'm glad you're here I'm uh, it's uh I think you've heard confidence is the language I use a lot and we all have our own paths to, to confidence. Yeah. Thank you. Lynn, how about you? Thank you, Marla, for that. I really identify with that. I'd much rather read a book about uncluttering my house than actually uncluttering my house. So, um, yeah, so I, I've been working on these practice stitches, uh, starting with the class and I've been adding to it a little and uh, I thought I was doing okay. And then I found this little blue uh, piece of cloth in my, uh, in my thing. And I think this is the one that, with the lines on it, that we're, this is like a practice. Thing. This is what I should be doing and giving to you or getting a picture of it. Yes, you. That, that's right. Yeah. I had forgotten. Yes, that was something that, that um, Anne had been kind uh, to prepare. Yeah, and I and I'm I, who was it? Was it was it Julia? Somebody's already spoken, and my my stitches are a lot bigger <laughs> than uh, than Anne's. Anne's got these little bitty things about half the size of the ones I was doing. So it it, it gives me something to 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 work toward. Uh, and she has her knots on the back. Uh, you can barely see them. My knots on the back are huge and long and. <laughs> So I, I have a lot of work. I have, I have a long way to go. Uh, but I just wanted to say that um, when you were talking just then with Claire about the knotless knot, knotless start, I mean, the knotless start, I thought, wow, that, that sounds so Buddhist, so Zen, the knotless start, uh -huh. the gate. Um, or I just said the knotless knot on purpose. Maybe we should use that metaphor. Uh, no, truly. Thank you. That's, yeah, that's interesting. Untying the knot, and then what's left? The knot was not. Rosemary, as she's in the middle of stitching. Hi. Uh, hey. Okay, so yes, I'm on my um, middle line as well. I guess a few of us are on the frame and and base. So yeah, it's coming along, you know, little little by little. Yeah, looks great. Thank you. Yeah. It's um, it's a relief not to um have to worry about not going all the way through. Like you can go all the way through, so it's yeah. makes it a lot easier. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Great. yeah, I'm I'm good. I've done the first line of the envelope, and I'm about to do the second line, so I can make the corner. I think that's the the top corner, as it were, the one that opens. So. Yes, uh, so the one that's folded over twice and then yes. inverted. Yeah. Yes. So I think um, I think I'm just doing this line, and then when I get to that, I can come and check in with you about the next bit. Great. Great. Okay. And yes, thank you for all you do, John. Thank you. I have a few questions, actually. I uh, finally found some silk thread yesterday, but I wasn't sure how many spools I should buy. So how much total do I need? Um, so the full Rakasu has maybe, I keep forgetting the number. It has single digits uh, of, of meters of, of stitches in it. I think it's three to six meters of stitches in it. Okay. So you only need theoretically, uh, I'd say the back stitch doubles that. So you need maybe 12 meters. So a single spool usually has 500. So I think you, a single spool is a very confident the only I school know. I can get in silk is a hundred meters. That still should be should be great. Okay. <laughs> you might be right. I might have misremembered the five hundred. In fact, I can so. I can get the cotton in oh, in meters. big amounts, but the silk in little. I've so never seen someone. I, I think you could probably sew four or five rakasu. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, when I sew, uh, 
do I only sew on Sundays when I'm with everybody or do I sew in my own meditation practice? You, you may sew on your own. Okay. I think the, um, the only guidance I have is if you're not feeling confident, do reach out. But otherwise, if you're feeling confident, you know what it is. There are, however, um, you and you touched on this. I think you 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 understood this. You said in my own meditation practice, you do approach this as practice. Generally speaking, um, I have sewn on a plane, um, but generally speaking, what I will try to do is light incense and be silent. No music, no television. Um, I'm not doing this to to sew. I'm not doing this to complete a garment. I'm doing this as a practice. Uh, so you, I think you hinted at that. But the, with, as long as you were kind of bring that reverence, that 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 practice mind. If you, as long as you bring a practice mind to the practice, yes, by all means. Okay. And my last question is related to the to the size of the stitch. So is it that I'm trying to go on the chalk line at the bottom of the chalk line? to start my stitch and then just above the chalk line, is, is the chalk line the length that I should be aiming for for the stitch? That is a good rule of thumb, yes. Okay. And let me just, because I've, I know I've engaged over email about the length of the stitch a little more, um, but I want to make sure everyone benefits, can benefit. Um, you can see on this example, these are all done usually while talking, while explaining something. So um, there's some variant. Some of them are a little, I think mostly spacing. That's a little on the wide end. But you can see that generally speaking, they do start just below uh, and they end just above the chalk line. The main, um, when I first started, I would actually hold it so near to my face that I could see the individual threads of the fabric. Um, and I'm nearsighted, so that had to be quite near. Uh, but I would hold it so near that I could see the individual threads of the fabric. And I would actually try to pick the one just to the bottom and one just to the top. And I've, <laughs> I've learned to allow myself some grace and not you know, multiply my suffering. Um, so I'm not no longer holding it so near my face. But um, that is the, the original guidance. And I mentioned over uh, email to some folks that it's originally called the, um, the rice grain stitch, or that's one, one uh, way it's described, I think, originally in Japanese. Um, and the, um, so the little, once it gets so long that it no longer could be seen as a grain of rice, that's when you know, a little really miniature grain of rice like that one, that's, that's a pretty long grain of rice, about two millimeters long, I'm guessing. In fact, I'm pretty confident I just measured this recently. And I'm gonna show an example from my own Rakasu. This is something that um, Peg and I agreed. I had some stitches that had gotten, um, gotten a little out of hand. This is my original Rakasu that we're looking at. And um, we're, I think it's these here. On these corners, it, there's so it, this happens a lot. I don't know why, but um, when in my my cohort, when I was first learning to sew, people who picked up from years and years ago, um, who started sewing, you know, five years ago or whatever, that joined our cohort, um, they also had these on these corner strips, and this is a little a little longer than is customary. I think they're still there's nothing wrong with them per se. Um, I'm not, I'm never going to undo them or re redo this rakasu. Like this is going to be the one I wear until it falls apart. Um, but when you compare it to these that just skipped that center chalk line, which you can actually still kind of see um, that when you compare the two, there's a, there's a very glaring difference. And this is more common. Um, this is what most teachers will guide towards. However, um, Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna circle. I'm gonna say the best the best reason not to do these long ones and to instead do these shorter ones is that the shorter ones are it's much easier to at a distance uh, they do not appear inconsistent, whereas when they are long inconsistencies in length inconsistency in angle uh, are are quite glaring um, comparatively. 
And this is not a fashion garment. This isn't something that, um, this isn't something that where we really should be worried about the way that it looks, but we can also be prudent. Um, we, can, we can hold both of those contradictions, I think, um, where, you know, you're, you are, we are both uh, keeping some mind for how it is traditionally constructed, how it traditionally is meant to look, and also not hold it to be this, this fashionable standard. So if I'm sewing and I feel that perfectionistic side come up and I can see that the stitch is too long, do I take my needle out and pull that last stitch and re-thread um, my needle and continue? Or do I just go with the stitch the way that it is and understand that imperfection is part of it? If you pull the stitch that's a little too long, does it ever really go away? Does hmm, how uh, zing? Well, so um, I don't know how to. That's not meant to be a zinger. Um, no, but it was perfect, John. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sue, how about you? Yes, I'm. I'm. Um, I don't think I've got anything else to ask. I sent them my stitches and got the okay on that. Um, my challenge is trying not to go too quickly because then it all goes awry. Um, so it's like I say, that's a good practice in itself. So uh, I don't think I've got anything else other to ask. Other than, oh yes, tying the knots. I have a system of tying a knot, which is with my finger end and just rolling the cock round. Is that, is that frowned upon? to to and that's okay because um, I realized I thought you're not doing as you've been told <laughs> or instructed so <laughs> I I didn't know whether I was misbehaving or not so yes I'm mm -hmm. I am trying the to end. do the end knots like you do them um but the beginning knot is it's a it's one of those the, the standard is um the, the standard is that it is functional or that it works, that it is structurally sound. Mm -hmm. And um, the only limitation in doing things differently from how I'm teaching them is I cannot, if something goes wrong with the way that you're doing it, which I've tried it, it takes skill. So I trust that it's, you're never gonna have an issue with it. But if you did have an issue with something that you were doing differently from me, I may not be able to support you in troubleshooting it or, or figuring out a different way. So um, no, you do not need to do things exactly as I as I described. Thank you, thank you. And Lynn, um, I'm I'm doing the envelope, and I've got the bit where I'm. Uh, I can show you. I'm doing the A corner here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Before I, before I turn it. I have actually been me already done a little version of my own. Um, and the thing that I, well, I'll be interested to see what happens when I actually do it with the proper material is that it, the, the bit that was tricky was this bit here, bringing the things together. But um, so I'm I'm now doing the corner here. I'm going to baste it or whatever you would call it, stitch it together, but not to go through the uh, you know leaving leaving a, a space here. Yes. And um, and I wondered when you when you ironed things because I was curious about that process when you actually press it. I remember correctly, you don't. Uh, let me double check that. Or maybe at the very final moment, I'm speculating. It's been a long time since since yeah, you and Trudy are the first to reach the uh, the envelope. So I actually haven't thought about it in over a year. I don't believe pressing is ever essential to the actual construction of the garment. The only real 
um, or, or to the envelope. The only real thing that's super critical at some phases is how straight your line of stitches are and the distance to the reference lines. Um, because there's so many times where you're simply reversing it or, or turning it inside out that it would be a great challenge to, to get a crease out if it was done. Because the, I think the whole thing stays pretty much inside out the entire time you're sewing it. Uh, it does say so. on page two, John, uh, yes. when you turn it inside out, once I've done this corner and turn it inside out, that you iron that bit so that the mm -hmm. seams are visible from the, line, yes. from, from the lining side. Yes, so you turn it inside out. Does it, it well, to me, those, um, uh, so you will turn it inside out and then with the way that you've eased the lining versus the outside material with the outside being slightly larger, you should be able to have the lining sit you know, where the seam is on the lining side. Uh, and that is the time at which that instruction says to iron. And that really may be the only time. Yeah, I, I was curious how much you ironed because my my instinct would be to iron the whole of that sort of corner part and the bit that's going to be the flap that comes over. But uh, anyway, the whole the whole uh, that entire length for those both of those. I'll be right going off camera. Um, so as you've seen with your uh, with your sample piece. Uh, as you've seen, zoom this out. So as you've seen with your, your sample, one that you've made, this whole, this is that, those two seams that, that you'd be ironing. So you're helping make sure that all of it is not visible. Like you can see here, I, this was uh, not as straight as it could have been. And, um, and so that is where uh, this, all of this is gonna be, gonna benefit from your ironing. Right. And I've sewn it right to the edge because that seemed to be what it said. Okay. Yes. See, yes. see, we'll see what happens. So it's just so the entire line from one edge of the fabric to the other, so that's what I've done. Yes, and that will help uh, when you're constructing this point um the to keep it straight all the way into that seam allowance so it sounds like you're yeah it sounds like you're doing well <laughs> it's <laughs> yes. evolving you know? <laughs> I, you know it's about time that i i sew another envelope this one i, I don't know if i've told or I'll, I'll i'll tell the story again for the benefit of the new cohort but um i went off script. I did not want to use more silk than, uh, I couldn't find a himsa or non-killing silk um, in, uh, in, with the right finish uh, for when it was time to do my envelope. And the timing of our um, jukai was bearing down upon us. So uh, I went off script and did linen, um, which, it is a smooth linen and it felt, but it felt much smoother as a sample than it turned out to be. And it's not slick and buttery like you want silk to be. So um, I, every time I put in and take out my rakasu, I have to fight this linen. I have to, it does, it is so grippy. It does not, it is not smooth. So, um, you know, the sewing instructor at the time just kind of said, oh, that's interesting and we'll see how that turns out. And indeed we did. So uh, at some time I'm going to have to sew another envelope anyway. So maybe it's about time. Maybe Lynn, you can be my, my inspiration and Trudy, yes, both um, just to get me fresh on this again. Thank you. <laughs> I've been living with that mistake for some time. Oh, Sorry, I John, I had one more question about the ironing. Sure, um, yeah because my fabric arrived in the mail and it it is uh quite wrinkled can i iron before i begin yes, yes. okay and i you. um you've you've uh that was perfect lead in let's go so um yes so the very first thing you'll want to do with um with the face piece but in general all of these pieces if they were creased 
in shipment. And in shipment, often uh, the by necessity, the straps will get creased, the frame will get creased. So um, yes, always iron it as flat as you can. When you iron, do not use steam. The material that we have is um, unwashed and may shrink. If it is uh, inconsistently steamed, it may shrink, uh, introducing more uh, twist or, or warp to the fabric. If you know one corner gets very moistened and shrinks more than another side, that could lead to some inconsistency. So we generally steam, we generally iron without steam. The only exception being the silk, if it's really bad, um, the lining silk, we, we can use some moisture, but there's a, a trick to doing that. Okay, so that is everyone. So I'm going to, um, I'm gonna demonstrate how to uh, cut the face, which, um, is a daunting, it's the first cut that all of the new sewers will be making. And so um, in previous groups, it has been beneficial to make sure it's really clear where you're cutting. So this is my, my facsimile of um, the material. And you can see very clearly, this is not uh, drawn on the fabric that y'all received. Let me switch to the other camera. So it is clearer. So on the pieces that many of y'all received, there may be little X's on these cut lines, but these dotted lines are the cut lines. They are always, on this face piece at least, there is always seam allowance, cut line, seam allowance line. So anywhere you see three one centimeter spaced lines, the middle line of those is a cut line. And let me go ahead and gather, collect the link for um, let's see, face. Let me share this link. This link is going to be um, a reference for um, that you can use to confirm the, the original cutting template. Let's see, chat. And for anyone who is um, who is watching this recorded and doesn't have access to the link, um, there this is available on the ampamata.org website under the, if you go to groups and then go to uh, Sewing Buddha's Robe on the right-hand column, look for Rakusu Face. That is the name of the link. It is the fifth link down under instructions. So, this, um, when you cut, uh, for those of you who uh, do not have much sewing experience, when you cut fabric, generally you want to um, cut, these, these are paper scissors, not my sewing shears, please. Uh, <laughs> please like, forgive the, their appearance, but you want to cut as much of the length of the shear as you can in one, in one go. So not, you know, just a series of little snips here at the end. Um, it is easier to take care and get a good cut when you're doing a longer length. It's also um, good that if you can, um, and check that the, check your shears and see, check the bottom edge here to see if there's anything sharper that could gouge the surface you're working on. But it's good to keep the tip on the cutting surface. So um, as you're cutting, you have, it's kind of like a, you're creating almost a tripod of sorts or a bipod. You're, you're getting stability to, from the surface. So you're not only relying on the stability of your hands. And so you will position and um, you, you can just, you know, it's, it's cutting. I think we've all been doing it. And you're cutting in a seam allowance. So if I, I'm doing this, I'm intentionally exaggerating here. But if I get a little zigzaggy in my cut, as you can see, 
If that happens to you, that's okay. This is a seam allowance. This is a full centimeter that is meant to be uh, worked with. We do need about two millimeters in. You do need that, so you know, don't go, if you can avoid it, don't, don't go full half centimeter uh, in, but a little bit of wobble is okay. Um, try to do it with an open heart, not you know, uh, full of tension and fear, and just um, cut along. And you should end up with 10 pieces. There's five panels, and each panel has a uh, tan and cho, uh, or cho and tan, and the, uh, or a short piece and a long piece, which is how I will generally refer to them as short piece, long piece. So um, with two short piece, long piece, and then five panels, that means 10 pieces. And for now, um, all you need to do is cut. I'm gonna send a follow-up uh, email after this, this um, meeting, just to remind everyone, or just to, to say, but I do hope that everyone can have their material cut um, by our next class. Um, so, um, so are there any questions about cutting the material? Uh, anything at all about pressing it, about... Um, sorry, John, before we go into silence, I have more questions. Um, am I correct in thinking that, as with other sections, I should just if my rec where my rectangle crosses over existing stitches i just ignore the existing stitch i don't try to avoid them i just go where the stitch naturally falls yes yes um where um you're working on this middle line right now yes yeah um so i went ahead and stopped short of going all the way to the edge I would always just wherever, you know, if the next one would take me kind of far, I would stop. And then I also started a little bit off. I think that this is something I haven't come to a decision as a, as a teacher on, and I haven't heard from a teacher um, this question, or, or I haven't heard a teacher answer this question or see how they teach it. So, um, yes, if you were, doing the method where you weren't just using, let me switch cameras real quick so you can see context, not just chaos. So if you were doing the style where you started here perhaps, but you had you you were you weren't focused on just doing one leg, you were doing it based on the length of however long you comfortably pulled out. So if it went to here, then yes, I would say prioritize staying on the line, both front and back, which probably means putting a corner right here on that that's that seam mm. uh, and going across. I think that would be the, the a good uh, guide guidepost for for doing this that if you are going to turn a corner, try to put a corner stitch to to make a nice transition. Great. Um, thank you. And then just looking slightly ahead so that I can keep progressing over the next couple of weeks for the outer edge of the frame. Um, I don't understand the instruction to take an extra stitch at each corner. That is the uh, reinforced. Is it? I don't remember that in the instructions, honestly. And that's okay. something that I haven't heard prioritized by a teacher to hold corner together. So everyone sees and um, um, the question that is being asked, take an extra stitch at each corner to hold corner together. And I'm not entirely certain what that is in comparison to, you know, extra is a relative term. Mm -hmm. So, what is our baseline for extra? I'm not entirely clear. And if I let me navigate real quickly to the digital version of this to maybe get a better photo. I cannot see anything that looks different or special to me. I think if I see, I'm looking at the photo 
on mm -hmm. the digital copy of the instructions, which is marginally better than this printed one. And all I see is that there is definitely, they, they were able to place a stitch very near the corner, um, which simply could have just been where they started. So I guess that's the, the key takeaway here is that don't shy away from the corner when finishing or starting, if that means you can secure this corner. Mm. I want to take note of that. And what, how about this? If I'm going to reach out to um, some other sewing teachers on this question, and I won't say anything if it's if they just confirm that my understanding is close enough. But if the, I learn anything that that changes the guidance I've just given, I will I'll follow up. Um, Great, thank you. But but is it would it be okay then to to take a similar approach on the outside line as you just spoke about with the middle line? That if I'm cutting thread to do just one side, that I would mm -hmm. start slightly outside the existing line of stitches rather than yeah. cross over it yes yes exactly yeah, fine okay. and that's that is how i've always um sewn them yeah great thank you and my final question um and i apologize you i, I asked all those questions it's at okay. the start and, and then i i did the basting and i finished my chalk rectangle and then i was like mm, I, I understand the theory of the not less beginning i just couldn't remember exactly where the needle comes up and goes back down <laughs> okay yeah thank you um so i'm not going to demonstrate a few well i mean i'm going to try not to do it all over again yeah uh let me find a pin so um John, i wouldn't mind if you did it all over again if that's not asking too much okay <laughs> yes i'll be happy to thank you <laughs> So ordinarily, with the unreinforced uh, knotless start, uh, ordinarily you would come up here in a normal namukebutsu stitch, where you would come up above the line to start and then be a knot at the end. So that's how you would normally do it. So what we're going to do instead, since we are going to actually do that stitch at the very end. We want to skip the beginning part of it and start at the, the end. So you're gonna start at the bottom right of, of the stitch. Let me point to this existing stitch so it's clear. You're going to insert your needle here on the bottom right. And that's gonna be where you start. And then once you've finished your whole line of stitches, you're gonna come back and insert this end as the, the way to finish off. The, the line of stitches. So demonstrating it. Um, and I'm actually going to use this line. So I go in, bottom right. And then I come out at the top. And does that give you confidence, Claire? Uh, and then do you go back through the first hole that you made to complete uh, the? No, let me go ah, ahead. So, so you're leaving a kind of a double, you're coming up two stitches worth to the left than you normally would. So that when you, no, you... go back through to complete the Namikabitsu, then the tail is still. I think you said two, and that doesn't align with, I'm going to start on a new line. So it's. Uh, clearer. So I'm going up a normal stitch length away. Uh, this is maybe three millimeters that I've come up. Mm -hmm. And I do leave that two needle length tail mm -hmm. um, outside of the material. Oops. Almost lost. And so from here, we're just doing a normal Namu Kebutsu stitch. As soon as you get this in, and you've come out here, it's normal namu kibutsu, um, with the only caveat being keep an eye on this so that you don't accidentally pull, uh, you don't 
pull too much of it out or, or leave yourself too short a tail. So maybe just, you know, be very gentle this first one, or you could even hold it maybe, I don't know. Might need too many hands to do that. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna come up. And as I come up, I'm just gonna be careful not to accidentally pull this through. So pulling it tight while holding this with my pinky. Mm. And that from there, it should be relatively secure. And then you can just continue on your line of stitches and get two more in. Mm. Do you not want to go back down quite close to where the tail is so that you don't end up with a little patch without a visible stitch? No, so that's what the, so you're, you're leaving the tail to come back to later. So the tail is unfinished intentionally. Um, what you're going to do, so you've, this line of stitch will continue all the way across, right? And so now let me cut this off so it's not confusing. So imagine this line of stitches continues forever and ever. And you've still got this tail. This tail is going to be buried. Um, and that's what's going to give us the friction of what gets left in the material. That's what's going to hold this in place. So I'm going to take the tail, which I've now threaded. So I'm coming back to actually sew with the tail. I'm going to insert it at the top where oh, the stitches yeah. normally begin. Okay. And I'm feeling on the back to make sure I'm not coming out, which I am. You carefully feed your needle and your thread through both layers of fabric or however many there are. It's not coming out on the back. So you can see there's, oh, there is some shiny metal. So I'm gonna have to back out to not get that metal. Unfortunately, everywhere you're doing this, there's more than two layers of, of material, I think. Uh, I don't think there's any place where it's actually this challenging to, yeah, see, I got a little shiny metal still, but for the sake of demonstration, I'll just complete it. So that's the stitch there at the end. Yeah. That's what we okay. formed. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you. Yeah. No worries. Happy to. John. So, mm -hmm. hi. I'm at the other end of that same line that Claire is on. And uh -huh. um, so, am I ending um, the that line with the same tail and then going back in? That's right. Yeah. You're doing um for your final stitch uh let me think how can i demonstrate this yeah so uh I make a tail here. right I make a tail at the end well you've got you've already got your tail at the end i mean that's the thread you've been sewing with right? correct is the main, okay and so you've just come up for your last, this is gonna be my last stitch. It's all the way at the end and you've come up for it. And so you've got this thread out now, you're going to finish by doing what I just did. You're going to finish the thread. This last stitch will also be the beginning of your knotless knot, so to speak. Uh. So I'm going in, quite at an angle and I'm trying to thread my needle in between these stitches. So as though these are the arches in a, in a tunnel, mm -hmm. I am trying to thread. I've done an awful job. Uh, again, you're doing this through more than two layers. So it should, you hopefully you have so an easy in, be time in between the two layers of fabric. Yeah, not visible front or back. Yeah, like that. There's, you can't see okay. the needle at all. You go through at least three, um, but you can go as long as your needle is, but get at least three loops that you go through and then come out and pull it tight and then over tighten it just a little bit. 
and by over tightening it when you cut it right next to the fabric, you should be able to pull it in. So it just disappears. Perfect. Thank you. Yes. And after that first stitch, would you kind of put um put the needle through from the front to the back and then to the front again like we have been doing or is it too is the fabric is it too many layers for that to be the right thing and you would you would pull the needle through from the back and then send it back through to the front in two different motions it is challenging to um let me see. So here's some examples. So I, I do um, I do not pull it all the way through and I, um, I, I keep the needle in the material the, the entire time uh, as we mm. have been doing. I think either option is okay, but do keep an eye if they if you're um, not getting through on the bag at all, then go ahead and switch to pulling all the way through. But if they get a little short, just because of how many layers of fabric there are, then um, maybe reconsider. You can see here. Um, so I was actually experimenting with this very um, question on the squares um, because it had been so long since I had last done some, I didn't remember um, just how I had done it. And I believe I had done it by pulling it all the way through. So this line, you can see uh, above the neat line there's these back stitch back ends and you can see they're quite jumbled it's actually i feel like it's much more challenging to get mm, that kind of straight nice finish on the rear of the namo kibutsu and then these were all done uh or at least these two were done using the the normal method i think this one was too and i found it so much easier even with all those layers of fabric to do um to just keep it the, the the needle in the thread rather than pull it yeah. off. Right. So I I leave both options to you, but if this this I think is this wasn't a, a uh, this isn't not ideal. You can see I think it there. I don't know if yeah. it even caught one thread. I think it may have just missed entirely on the rear. Mm. Um, so that's the risk that you miss on the rear entirely and that is a structural shortcoming yeah uh, so uh, avoid that okay um and then on the back that first one i've done the stitch on the back is longer this first one that's okay. Um, yeah, and I did that so that when the on the front, when that stitch uh -huh. completes, yeah, then it will land. The distance will be consistent from there to there, and then from there to there. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's prudent. That's a okay. That's a good approach. Yeah. Okay. Great. Although, yeah, I'm not sure that the back is looking how it's meant to look. It is to me, although it is okay. starting somewhat distant um, from the. Um, where is that basting? Show me where that based stitch is on the on the front, will you? Where is that relative to the stitch? Okay, it's quite far. Okay. Um, I think that is okay. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. The way I think the reason it did that is because on the rear there will be no that one will kind of have the the history won't be transparent on the back of how that stitch came to be because you've hidden that tail deep inside the material. Yeah. So that's what will happen there. Right. John? Yes. So on the um, the beginning of this line, I'm almost finished with the line. So on the beginning of the line with the, um, the tail and going in, um, 
So it's it's coming out on the bottom. Is that correct? And what do I see? I don't this is the this is the 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 end of your line of thread or stitches. The beginning. The beginning of of your next row. No, the same same the line I just I am finishing. This is the beginning of that of that. Oh, okay, of that process. Right. So you will. Um, so you know how the next step would nor if you were doing another stitch would be to go in to the bottom right. So you're going to go in on the bottom right, just like you would normally, but your needle is going to be facing the opposite direction from normal. Um, so you're going. Oh, hold on, because I th I think. <laughs> Maybe I went incorrectly. I uh, incorrectly. I went in on the bottom right. Was that not right? No, that's correct. That's correct. Okay. Uh, but um, so your next step will be. Well, so do you want another visible stitch to be there up against those? Um, do you plan on on, on the, when you're done with this process, there being one more stitch in the, in the it, material? It, it could be, it would look fine if there were okay. or if there weren't, either way. Okay, then go ahead and um, put the tip of the point of your needle where that last or the next stitch would start. Okay. And go in facing back towards the, the, the previous stitch. So, it would be and that's where i'd start the tunnel that's where you start the tunnel so if this was the okay. this is where you've come out mm -hmm. this is where you're going to go in and you're going to go in facing towards that tunnel and, and start to to do the tunneling itself okay okay good thank you you're welcome john i've just got to i've just sewn the two lines and i've i've now turned the fabric um, so it says turn inside out, but it's actually the outer fabric that's now on the outside. It's not inside out. It's just you turned it inside out. Yes, it should. This is closer to how it will actually end up. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, and now I iron it so that the, I haven't sewn these two edges yet. Just these two that come to this. So the A corner. A corner. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yes. So you're going to kind of uh, as though, yes, I think you understand, but I'll, I'll demonstrate it as well. You, you will pull in the lining material. Mm, that's white on white. That does not do much. You will pull in the, the lining at like this so that you have once you fold this over, you won't be able to see the lining material at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. And that's what you. the yeah, that's that ironing stuff that Lynn had asked about. Sure. Well, I think inconsistency has been the name of the game for me today, and deciding whether they're okay or too inconsistent. Or <laughs> That's been my practice today. <laughs> yeah, that is. I was telling someone via email, um, and I've forgotten who at this time, but their um, wind consistency is comes and goes. I always start with practice stitches. I always go back to the practice stitch. Just you know, there, you can't you can't beat just doing the stitch. And as opposed to doing the stitch to do the next phase of your construction. When you're just doing the stitch, you're just doing the stitch. I think that's maybe what I should have done today. Just lots of practice stitches. <laughs> well, you have to discover that there's that inconsistency in the first place. So maybe that was where you were at. Maybe today was the, that discovery that there's been some inconsistency and that's the, that's the cue, that's the nudge to do this practice stitch. Go back to the practice stitch. To the altar, one to the altar, then one to each other. So good to see you all. If you want to stay for a bit longer, there's no rush, but Shelly, 
enjoy enjoy your precepts. Thank you. Thank you, John. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, John. Have a good one. Thank you, John. Bye, all. See the rest of you on retreat next um, Friday. Yes. See you then. <laughs> We're thinking of you, John. We'll take you with us in spirit. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to join you one of these days. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs>